Hello everyone, good day. So today I am going to brief about Mathematics Checkpoint. This will be your seminar for the 2021, for the year of 2021. So let's brief about the Checkpoint exam date which is on the 4th to 9th of October, 2021. We are gonna, uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, Checkpoint Mathematics briefly. So this is the Mathematics Paper Code. Paper one will be uh, 1-112-01. And the code for paper two will be 3-1-2-0-2. Um, so the time for each paper, it will actually take up for one hour. That's the duration for both paper, for each paper. And the marks for each paper, it carries 50 marks. So the materials needed for paper one, okay, you will only need geometrical instruments and there will be no calculator allowed when you are doing paper one question. For paper two, you can use a calculator. As the rule says, you, are, you need to use calculator for paper two. So let's go through on the important instructions on the paper. So these are the important instructions that you can find on the paper for mathematics. Write your center number, candidate number, and name on all the work you hand in. Write in only dark blue or blue or black pen. You may use uh, an HB pencil for any diagrams, graphs, or rough working. Do not use staples, paper clips, glue, or correction fluid. Do not write in any barcodes. You have to answer all the questions. And as for paper one, no calculator is allowed. You should show all your working in the booklet. The number of marks is given in brackets at the end of each question or part question. The total number of marks for this paper is 50. So each paper carries 50. Index. Okay, so what are we going to do, go through today is all the important subtopics that we can learn from year 7 mathematics to year 9 mathematics. So these are the total uh, index that we can have, we can see here from numbers, algebra, geometry, measure, handling data, and problem solving. So I'll be actually introducing you the subtopics from each index here. And I will be giving you example of questions from checkpoint, the answer scheme, and also the end of report from the examiner. So these are a few tips when you want to answer questions in your mathematics. So these tables give general guidelines or marking on, on marking answers that involve number and place value and units of length, mass, money, duration, or time. If the marking scheme does not specify the correct answer, refer to these general guidelines. So basically, you are able to answer in a very, very different type of way according to the general guidelines. So let's look into number and place value. The table shows various general rules in terms of acceptable decimal answers. They would accept if you are not writing as 0 0.675. Instead, you're only writing it as decimal 675. They also accept tailing zeros, such as you are writing the zeros after the number that is after the decimal. Uh, they also accept, always accept appropriate tailing zeros, such as 3.00 meter and 5.00 kg. They would accept a comma instead of a comma instead of a decimal point. As an example, 0, 0,638. So these are the general guidelines that you can see to answer questions that has related to number and place value. As for units such as length, mass, money, duration, or time, for example here, units are not given on answer line and the question does not specify a unit for the answer. This is for a question that does not given a unit where you have to write a unit that would be the correct answer. They would also ex accept if you have written a correct conversion of the unit. They would not accept without the unit M, without the word M, if the question has not given the unit. If the unit is given on the answer line, such as blank and meter, so you can only write the number only. That would be the correct answer. Correct conversion, 
provided the unit is stated unambiguously. They would not accept 185 meter since the correct answer is 1.85 meter. If the question states the unit that the answer should be given, for example, give your answers in meters, you are only allowed to write your answer in meter and they would also accept your answer without meter, without the unit written. So you are not allowed to write any other conversion other than meter. All right, let's move to the next one. As in money. So for a question, if the amount is in dollars and cents, the answer should be given in two decimal place. That would be the specific rule for, um, for unit that you've been given in money form. So they would accept dollar 0 0.30 or dollar 9 or dollar 9.00. They would not accept 0 0.9. If units are not given on answer line, this is a question when, where the units were not given. So you have to write uh, any un, uh, unambiguous indication for the correct amount, such as 30 cent, 30 C, or any other units. You have to use the unit. They would not accept the answer without a unit if the question does not give it, is not giving you unit on an answer line. If dollar sign is shown on the answer line, then they would accept you only writing the answers or the numbers. They would not accept if you are writing uh, any an unambiguous unit. If sense is shown on the answer line, you will need to write the number and also you can write a dollar sign. So you're not allowed to write a decimal of 0 0.30 cents or dollar 30 cents. Because dollar 30 cents is equivalent to $30, not 30 cents. All right. As in duration, uh, as in hours, hour, minutes, and all the units, they would accept any unambiguous indication using any reasonable abbreviation for hours, such as if you want to write it only as uh, the alphabet, H, HR, HRS, and for minutes, M, MIN, and MINS. They would accept all of this, such as 2 hours, 30 minutes, or you want to write it in a short form abbreviation, such as 2H and 30M. They would not accept incorrect or ambiguous format, such as 2.30, 2 2.30, 2 to the ratio of 3, or anything else. Any correct conversion with appropriate units, such as 2.5 hours is equal to 150 minutes or 324 seconds. So you do not accept you writing only the number without the unit. Also accept any uh, unambiguous digital stopwatch format, such as 0 to 30 and 00. They will not accept any indication such as this because this is showing as 2.30 and this is showing as 2 hours and 30 minutes. So there will be two different things. There are many ways to write times in both numbers and words, and marks should be awarded for any unambiguous method, except time written in numbers or words, unless there's a specific instruction in the question to be written in numbers or words. So some examples are given in the table. So these are the examples that you can write any unambiguous indication of correct answers, such as 7.30, you can write it as 07.30 in 24-hour format, or you can write it in 1900. Um, as you can see, you can also write half past, half past 7 o'clock in the morning, or 30 minutes past 7, or also accept 07.30. Uh, they also accept a correct conversion to 12-hour clock, if it's the answer is uh, 1642, you can also write as 442 p.m. If you do not write the p.m., consider the examiner will be thinking you're writing it as a.m. Okay, so that's the thing they show it here. You have to write it p.m. instead of a.m. For 1642, uh, you can also write 1642 instead of the number. Okay. Um, and also the exact combination of numbers and words, such as 18 minutes to 5 p.m., 42 minutes past 4 in afternoon, and all. So let's move into the index, okay, for as the first uh, subtopic will be numbers. Under numbers, you can see few content that you have come across when you are answering questions in maths. So operations, uh, cal using a calculator, any calculation using a calculator, a place value, a decimals, a percentage, a fraction, approximation, 
powers and roots, integers, multiples, uh, low, low, lower common multiple, lowest common multiple, and highest common factor, factors and primes. So all of these are actually considered in one subtopic called number. So let's in, look into example of questions since we have two papers. So I've divided into two papers, which is paper one, what are the type of questions that you can, you can look into the subtopic numbers and also paper two. So let's look, let's look into paper one first. For example, okay, if a teacher asks her class to work out the answer, eight plus 12 divide four. Okay, Mike says that the answer is five. He is wrong, explain. So this number uh, question subtopic is falling under the topic bit mass or we call it as bot mass okay so let's talk about bit mass so if it's a bit mass consider you are talking about indices okay so we don't see any indices here so we will moving into bot mass so bot mass is starting from bracket order of operation division multiplication, addition, and subtraction. So, of course, according to the board mass rule, we have to complete bracket first. So, if there is no bracket here, we are going to move into the next one, which is order of operation, which is starting from division. So, as you can see here, we need to start to divide first. So, once we solve the divide, we will have 8 plus with 3, which is supposed to be equals to 11. So, the answer is wrong. Explain why Mike is wrong. So this is a question of one mark. Okay, what you can see on the answer scheme. As you can see in the answer scheme, a correct explanation relating to the order of operation. Maybe you can write division should be done first since according to the board mass, it is saying that we have to do division first. You can straight away write the exact explanation. Or if you want to show the working like I just showed just now, it's also accepted as an explanation. You are, it, they would not accept if you are just writing he has not calculated correctly. The question says he is wrong. So we need to prove why is he wrong. So you cannot say that he or he hasn't calculated correctly. You have to show the proof where did he did mistake. That's the answer for question, uh, example, question. Okay. Let's move into, this is called end of series report. This is a report that is that has been given by the examiner over the years. So every year they will have every paper, they will have a report that they, were, they will be commenting on the question based on the answers that all the students have answered. So according to the examiner, they said that for question four, student will answer all this question very well. Okay, they, a well answered question by most candidate. But some thought the examination paper was wrong and that Mike was right. Mike was correct. So these are the common things that uh, mistake that student will be happening here. So th this end of series report, report really helps student to identify the mistakes that they have been doing uh, regularly. All right. Let's move to the next example. We are still under the topic of numbers. Okay, so if the question say work out 1.5 times 0 0.8. When I highlighted this is a paper one, you are not able to use calculator for paper one. So if students face difficulty to multiply using a decimal, I would always, uh, I would always suggest my students to change it into a fraction. So 1.5, when you are changing into fraction, you will have the answer as 15 over 10 and eight, uh, 0 0.8 will be 8 over 10. So using fraction, it will be easier for us to calculate. So uh, what we can have here is we can divide first. All right, we have 5 times 2 and then, sorry, we have uh, 2 times 5 and 3 times 5. Okay, so when you are multiplying the numerator with numerator, you will have 12. And when you're multiplying um, uh, denominator with denominator, you will have 10. So the final answer can be 1.2. Okay, let's move into the division. So 15 can be divided by, I'm planning to change the dec uh, decimal into a fraction. So I'll have 6 over 100. And you are not supposed to divide a fraction. So what you can do here, you change it into multiply. And this fraction will be vice versa as 100 over 6. 
Okay, so to solve this, when you are multiplying the numerator, you will have 1,500 divided by 6. So 1,500 divided by 6, you will have an answer of 250. So you have one mark here and one mark here. Okay, let's look into the answer scheme. Okay, so according to the answer scheme, it is just the same as mine and there is no further information. So it means it's a fixed answer. And if you are not having the same answer as the answer scheme, you are not eligible to get the one mark. All right. And remember, you are not allowed to use calculator. So any method will be helpful. And if you are not, uh, you, if you are not familiar with a method to multiply with a decimal, you can use the method that I show you, which is the fraction. Okay, let's move to the end of series report. So these are the command from the examiner over the years. So according to this question, okay, in general, part A was answered better than part B. So here, the most common error was to offer 12 rather than 1.2. So this is where I highlight to my students, if you have difficulty to multiply uh, decimal number where you are confused to place which decimal number, which decimal point is belongs to each other, you can use the fraction method. It never went wrong. And the next one for part B, here many candidates may, made an arithmetic errors with an incorrectly placed decimal point, which is very common. Very common for them to incorrectly place the decimal point. So to avoid this, you may use my method, which is again, the fraction method. Let's move into the third example. So now we are talking about integers, powers, and roots. So for this and to question to answer this question, you're supposed to master your powers and roots. So write down the value of square root 225. So this is something that we would know. Uh, 15 square will be the answer for 225. So I wanted to highlight something here, but I will be showing you in answer scheme later on. And for B, Draw a ring uh, around the best estimates the cube root of 100. So the nearest to cube root of 100 is equals to 81. Uh, sorry. Um, the, nearest, the nearest that is equals to 100 will be uh, 4 cube, which is equals to 64. Okay. So when it's 4 cube is equals to uh, 60, uh, 64 cube root is equals to 4. So the best estimate will be 4.6. Okay? And let's look into the answer scheme. All right. So according to the answer scheme here, um, they say the answer is 15. So uh, it's very common for students to answer 15 squared because they think that whenever you square root a question, you will get, Whenever you square root a number, you have to put it as 15 squared, which is totally wrong. So this is what I wanted to highlight earlier. So if you are doing this common mistake, try to avoid it because when you put 15 squared, it's, it's considered you have to solve it as 225. 15 is the root. 15 squared is where you need to find the square. Okay. And 4.6, they said, accept any unambiguous indication of the correct answer. So 4.6 will be the best answer. Okay, let's look into the end of series report as usual. So for question 16, uh, which is the question that I've, uh, I've showed you earlier. Okay, it is well answered by most of the candidates, but a small number spoil the answer by writing 15 squared. So this is the very common mistake that student will do. And let's try to correct this in future. So let's move to question B. This part proved to be more difficult with many opting for 10 as an easier if it's e easier if incorrect answer because mostly students will get confused with cube root and square root. So square root of 100 of course is a 10 but we are talking about cube root. So that's the thing most students will actually get confused with the answer. Okay, let's look into questions uh, for paper two. So paper two questions is a bit different because you are going to be using calculator. So the marking scheme also will be a little bit different. So let's look into it. For the example here, write a negative number in each box to make the calculation correct. Like I told you, in paper two, you are allowed to use calculator. So you can use calculator to find out the uh, possible numbers that you can multiply which is a negative number in each box 
when you find the possible number, you can get 18. So for this answer, I need to show in answer scheme. So these are the two numbers that can actually uh, uh, multiply to get the answer 18. So it's either you answer negative 3 or negative 6, or you answer negative 9 or negative 2. So there are two answers here that is accepted. Um, they accept correct decimals or fractions. So if you want to change it into decimal or fraction, it's also acceptable as long as it is a negative number. Let's move to the next one. Uh, this is the end of series report for all, for as a from the examiner. So for question one, it was not uncommon to see two positive numbers used or negative nine and negative nine, but generally this was well answered. So according to the examiner, this question was a bit easy. So most candidate, most candidate uh, generally answered, well answered this question. Next example is, okay, for example here, Saki has 1,865 apples. She packs them into crates and each crate can hold 40 apples. Work out the largest number of crates that she can fill completely. So if one crate holds 48 and she has um, 1,865 apples, so of course we will be using the division method. So 1,865 when you are dividing it 48, you will have a decimal answer which is equals to 38.9. For example, I want to make it into one decimal place. But there is no such thing as 38.9 crates. So what are the possible nearest answer that you can have to make sure that it ha he has the largest number that she can fill completely? Okay, so according to the answer scheme, they will give you one mark if any of the any of the uh, any of the decimal number is seen because it's a two marks question and for the right answer it will be 38 the largest they can have okay so when you when you round it up 38 will be the best answer okay so two marks you're supposed to do working for the one mark and the second mark is the answer and for the end of series report so examiner thinks that uh, most candidates offered the answer 38.85, 38.9, and 39 were common as the correct answer. There was insufficient appreciation of the need to round down in this question. It means students tend to leave the answer as a decimal number instead of making it into a roundup round up question. Because there's no such thing as 38.85 grades, so students maybe, uh, maybe they did not see the answer there. Okay. Let's move into the next question. So example here, a hotel has 250 rooms, 175 rooms are occupied. Calculate the percentage of the rooms that are occupied. So let's calculate uh, the percentage. To calculate percentage, the rooms that are occupied will be 175 divided with the total rooms, which is 250. And you multiply it by 100. Okay, so when you divide all of this and when you do the calculation, you will have the answer as 70%. Okay, so where do you get the two marks? Because it's a two marks question. Where do you get the two marks? So according to the marking scheme, if they have seen you doing the working, which is I've done just now, 175 divided by 250. If you do not show the multiply over 100, so it's never mind. As long as they see you writing the fraction, they will give you one mark. And after you multiply it by 100, you are supposed to get the answer as 70. So two marks for uh, one mark for the working and one mark for the answer. Let's look at the series report, end of series report. So examiner thinks that this question was generally well answered with 30% or uh, 250 minus 175 equals 75 as common errors. So some students, they decided to minus it to get the answer. So this was generally answered uh, just despite all the common errors that they have seen. Okay, so let's look into the next um, subtopic. We call it as algebra. So under algebra, you can see that you have a small subtopic such as simultaneous equation. Uh, you have equation here. You have solving. You have forming, formula, sequences, graph. And all of these are in the subtopic called algebra.
Okay, let's move into the first uh, question example for the subtopic algebra. And this is from question paper one. So again, I'm reminding you, paper one, you're not allowed to use calculator. So let's figure out how to answer question in this subtopic. So the first question will be, they ask you to factorize this completely. So when they ask you to factorize completely, it means you're not supposed to have any common factor when you factorize. So the common factor from this question will be um, 2 and also x. So you just need to divide the uh, terms here with the common factor here. So you will have x and also 3 here. Okay, so when you multiply 2x times x, you are supposed to get 2x squared. And when you multiply 2x with negative 3, you are supposed to get negative 6x. And this is how you recheck the answer. Okay, so let's see why it is given two marks later in the answer scheme. So let's complete B first. Make R the subject of the equation. So you have to ensure that you are making R as your subject of the equation. So let's move into the first step, which is you are going to divide the whole equation with 2 because you want to eliminate this number 2. Okay, so when you divide the whole equation with 2, you will have h divided by 2. You can actually get rid of this 2 and you are left with r minus 4. And again, we wanted r as the subject. So you can actually uh, eliminate by adding 4 with the, whole, with the whole equation. So you have h over 2 plus 4 equals to r. And there you go. There are two marks for you for this question. So let's look into the answer scheme. Let's see how we can gain marks here. Okay. According to the answer scheme, um, they will be giving you one mark if they've seen you a side of the first, uh, the first factorization, which is x bracket 2x minus 6. And then they have seen you uh, factorizing in the final answer. So they say ignore attempts to solve or expand back out, which means if they've seen you uh, expanding again the answer, they ask you to ignore. That is the way you check whether you are you have factorized it completely or not. So they ask to ignore it, but uh, they, ask, they, they, they will be giving you mark here. And of course, they'll be giving you another mark here. Okay? All right, for the final answer. Let's look into the second one. For the second B, okay, um, the correct first step is whether they have seen you writing 2R minus 8 or H over 2 uh, minus 4. Any of the working, any of the working they've seen here, so they'll give you one mark. And of course, they'll give you another one mark for the final answer. Okay, so that's how the, how do we gain marks here for two marks question. Okay, uh, for the end of series report, so this question, okay, uh, the examiner thinks it's very often contain errors more in part B in part A. So let's see for A, a number of candidates wanted to solve 2x bracket x minus 3 equals to 0 and 2x bracket x minus 6 also seem to be a popular error. You're not allowed to put equals to 0 because we're talking about factorization of an expressions, Okay. And also, the most common error was to expand the right-hand side, 1m, for 2r minus 8, and then making any different kind of errors in the next step, such as h over 4 over 2. Okay, this is something that I would like to highlight. Okay, so as the answer just now that we have seen here, h over 2 plus 4 is the right answer. You have to know that 4 is having a different denominator. So that's the reason this is not accepted. So if you want to make the uh, denominator as the same, you need to multiply this with 2 and you will have h plus 8 over 2. So this would be the right answer. And also the common errors where they have 2 plus 8 and all stuff. So I hope you guys can understand on the common error that I've highlighted here. Let's move into the next question. So this is a bit difficult because it's involving a diagram. So the diagram shows a shape with all side lengths measured in centimeters and all the angles are right angles. Uh, write an expression in terms of x for the total shaded area. 
Okay, so they ask you to find the expression for the total shaded area, which is only both of this. So I name this as A and I name this as B. Let's look into the marks. It's a two marks question. So you are not escaped from writing the working. So let's look into the working. So the area of A, uh, we are going to take this X and we are going to multiply by the length. And uh, sorry, the height. So length multiplied by the height. So the height here is x, and the total is x, including both of this box. But the length of the height of the small rectangle is three. So if just imagine if I have five centimeter as the total length, and I have three centimeter as the length of the rect small rectangle, I will need to minus this both in order to get this. Correct. So we can apply the same method by having x minus with 3. Okay, so x multiply by x minus 3. Okay, so you will have x square minus 3x. That is for area of A. Let's look into area of B. So area of B as the same thing, we have the length as 5. And we need to find the height. So the height we have found just now, which is equals to x minus 3. So 5 my, uh, multiply x minus 3. You will have 5x minus 15. So what do we do here? We have to find the total. So we need to add both of these. A plus B. We have x squared minus 3x plus with 5x minus 15. You are not allowed to leave the answer like this because... You can see that there is a like terms that you need to simplify. Of course, the total answer will be uh, negative 3x plus 5x is 2x. So x squared plus 2x minus 15. Okay, now let's look into where we can get the answer. Uh, sorry, the mark for the two marks. Okay, so the question here says any correct expression such as um, X, or first first mark here will be identifying one side of x plus 5 or x minus 3. Or you are showing the method, how do you imply the length? And then for uh, the correct answer will be x min plus 2x minus 15. Okay, so it means you are supposed to have gain mark at x minus 3 and then a total of the answer one, uh, the total of x squared minus 2x plus, plus 2x minus 15. You can also gain an, a mark if you are writing this. So instead of writing this, you can also gain mark here. Okay. And also, they, don't, they allow unsimplified expression for two marks attempts to solve that. You, ha you have the attempt to solve it. Let's look into the end of series report. So for question 25, many candidates missed finding the side of x minus 3, just like how I find it just now, and other decided to solve the equation equals to 0. Okay, or tried to find perimeter instead of area, and most gain mark for identifying one shape x plus 5 using some kind of multiplication. As before, most successful candidates lay out their working correctly. So, of course, in this part here, they did not the common mistake they did not uh they did not actually uh focus on the word area some of them have done perimeter instead of area and some of them failed to identify the height of the rectangle okay okay let's move into the next example term to term rule the term to term rule of a sequence is multiplied by 3 the fourth term of the sequence is 54 work out the first term so term to term rule from a uh, number for like for example from this is the fourth term so the fourth term is 54 okay and the term to term rule of a sequence is multiply 3 so if i want to go to the fifth term i need to multiply 3 correct so when i multiply 3 i have the answer as 162 because when i want to move to another term i need to multiply by 3 so question is asking you to work out for the first term so this is very easy. You can use a mental calculation. If you are moving forward, you need to multiply 3. If you are moving backwards, you need to divide by 3. So when you are finding for the third term, the 54 needs to divide by 3, which will gain as 18. 
Okay, continuation here. For the second term, you need to divide by 3, which you will gain as 6. And for the first term, you need to divide by 3, which you will gain as 2. So this is how it works. And it's only one mark question. So you just need to show 2 as the first term. Okay, let's look into the answer scheme. Uh, 2 without further information. So they didn't show, they didn't uh, mention that you have to write anything in order to gain mark. You have to show working or white. It's just that 2 straight away, you can get 1 mark. Okay, so this is quite easy question. Uh, and the end of series report. Okay, this is the comment from the examiner. So for question 18, this was quite well answered, although 3 was a common misconception again. The power negative 2 seemed to cause the problem. Okay, and let's look into exam questions for paper 2. Okay, so paper 2, again, I'm reminding you, you can use calculator. So let's look into the example of questions here. So this is also a part of a uh, question sequence. So they ask you to find the end term of each sequence. The first then has been done for you. Okay, so we all know that uh, to find the end term, the formula will be A plus bracket N minus 1D. So the A stands for the first term. Okay, the N is the end term and the D will be the difference. Okay. So for the first one, for a uh, second box, second box, okay, let's put the first term. The first term will be 6 plus n minus 1. And the difference will be plus 6 for every single term. Okay, so you just put a 6 here. So when you expand the bracket, you have 6 plus 6n minus 6. Since 6 multiply negative 1 is negative 6. So you have 6 minus 6 and you can eliminate this both you will have six and only one mark for you. For the next one is you're using the same formula. Okay, using the same formula. Let's move into the first term will be five. This is the first term. And then plus with n minus one. And the difference will be plus three for each term. Okay, and the term to term rule is plus three. Okay, so you can write it as three. So you should expand the bracket. We have 5 plus 3 and 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So 5 minus 3 is 2. So 3n plus 2. This will be your n. Okay. So each, stand, each carries one mark. So that's the reason you will be having two marks here. Okay. Uh, one correct answer is one mark. And of course, two correct answer, two marks. That's it. So this is the answer. 3n plus 2 or 6, 6n or 3n plus 2. Okay. Let's move into the next one. Okay, this is the end of series report. So the first part, 6n, was usually correct. But the second part was often 3n with candidates failing to appreciate that the n term is related to the starting point, not just the common difference. So sometimes 6 plus n or 3 plus n were seen together. Okay, so that is very important for you to remember the formula of the n term. Okay, the next example is the values of x and y are directly proportional. So complete the table by filling in the missing numbers. So as you can see here, since they say it's directly proportional, you can find out the answer by dividing 72 with 4. Okay, so 72 divided by 4, you will have the answer as 18. It means 4 times 18 is equal to 72. So to get the answer here, you just need to divide by 18. You will have an answer of 3.5. That's it. And it's one mark, so one mark. They mention directly proportional. So that's the reason you choose to multiply here. Okay, let's look at the answer scheme. Nothing else, 3.5, that's it. Okay, 3.5 and there's no further information. End of series report, many candidates answer this complete correctly. Three or five will sometimes see. Maybe they put three or maybe they put five. Maybe they did not uh, use calculator perfectly. So yeah. Okay, solve the simultaneous equation using an algebraic method. And you must show how do you work your answers. When they say you must show how you work your answers, this is a three mark question. So they will give you a mark for your working and your answers. So let's look into how to work on it. Okay, so this is uh, an equation 
that you first step, I would I would like to use the elimination method. So here I would like to eliminate the unknown y. So in order to eliminate unknown y, I would like to multiply this equation into two. So I have the x plus two y equals to thirteen, and I have the new equation after I multiplied by two, which is six x plus with two y equals to forty eight. And I choose to eliminate 2y, which I could eliminate after I put a subtraction here. Okay. And then I minus x with negative uh, x with minus 6x. And I have negative 5x. And I have I minus 13 with 48. I would get the answer as negative 35. So to find x, I need to divide both part with 5, negative 5. So I have the answer as seven. Okay, so I've got my first value, x equals to seven. Having x equals to seven, okay, I can substitute, substitute x equals to seven into any equation I want. So I would like to substitute in equation one. So x, instead of x, I'm writing it as seven plus two y equals to 13. 2y equals to 13 minus 7. 2y equals to 6 and y equals to 3. 6 divided by 2, you will have the answer as 3. Okay, so let's look into the answer scheme. Where do you get the 3 marks? All right. Okay, according to the answer scheme, uh, attempt of eliminating either x or y. So when you do the X and Y, uh, when you have eliminated the X and Y, okay, with no errors, okay, and they've seen you writing something like this, okay, they, they will give you one mark here as they've given, if, if they've seen you eliminating method there. They'll give you second mark if they see X equals to 7 or Y equals to 3, where you find X first or Y first. Any unknown first, they'll give you the second mark. And the third mark, if they've seen you like this you have given the perfect answers. And they do not accept trial and improvement method, which is students tend to do it by using the calculator. Okay, they have not, they will be not doing any working. They will just randomly substitute any number to get the value. So try, that's called trial and improvement. So trial and improvement method is not allowed here since they already uh, highlighted as algebra method, which is eliminating or substituting. So one mark goes here, can you see? And one mark goes here and another one mark goes here. Solid three marks for you. Okay, let's look into the end of series report, which is a comment from your the examiners. So some learners answered this question with excellent response. Clear logical working lead to three marks credited. Other learners gain one mark for the correct values from trail and improvement method. As I mentioned before, students, very, very, very common uh, mistake that students do is they have, they have gained only one mark for the trail and improvement method. Uh, no supporting algebra method. So many more were credited with one mark for getting two values than one satisfied original equation. Uh, usually this was from incorrect first value being correctly substituted and only few learners were credited with two marks for finding x and then incorrect y. So it means what they meant was uh, as for the common mistake what student will do is um, some students will not do the working so straight away they will get x equals to 7 and y equals to 3. So without the working you only deserve one mark. And some students will, they will be finding the x equals to 7 perfectly. But when it comes to substituting, they have failed to answer y equals to 3. So these are the common mistakes that students will be doing. So whenever you want to answer this question, you have to ensure you are putting an extra effort on the question. So let's continue with our next subtopic, which is called geometry and measure so under geometry and measures okay you can see all the uh, subtopics such as uh, codes and spheres volume surface area parameter polygon triangles angles of line constructions and the tree transformation which is reflection translation rotation okay and also enlargement so let's look into example questions 
from geometry and measure. Okay, these are example questions from paper one. So let's look into it. So first question will be, the diagram shows a triangle drawn on a grid. So first question is, reflect triangle A in the line Y equals to 2 and label the reflection as B. So line equal Y equals to 2 will be somewhere here. Okay, so this is the most... Uh, common thing that students will do so line y equals to 2 is supposed to be here okay and when you want to reflect a uh, triangle a as you can see there are three boxes away from the line so it's going to be three boxes too okay one two three one two three and the last one will be one two three four five one two three four five okay so i'll just put a point here i put a point here and i put another point here okay so the new line that you can create is um you can see just need to connect this just give me a second okay so you just need to connect this triangle and you have to label this as B. Okay, since the question asks you to label so. All right, so that's the first step. All right, moving to the next question. Reflect triangle B in the line X equals to 1 and label the refraction C. So X equals to 1 it is going to be somewhere here. This is X equals to 1. All right, so we have to label it here. Okay, yep. So when you want to label it, again, you have two boxes. So another two boxes, right? Another, oh, sorry, there's another two, one, two, one, two, and one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, here. Okay. And here and here. So you can color this. I'll just change the color. Okay, so we have a new triangle after we have reflected. And we name this as C. Okay? Okay, so according to the question, which is the next question, once we already complete this, a rotation will map triangle C back to triangle A. So find the coordinates of the center of this rotation. Okay, so you need to find the coordinates uh, for the center of rotation of this um, C to A. All right, so first you can see um, this is actually a anti clock, uh, this is actually a clockwise um, direction. So let's look into the uh, coordinates from the answer scheme. So it says uh, one and two. So how do you actually find out the, uh, how do you actually find out the rotation is by drawing the intersection line okay so how you can do it from here okay from here and the last one will be here so the intersection point is here okay all right so the coordinate will be one and two as the answer scheme okay so you need to ensure that you have complete the first question, which is reflection of triangle B and then reflection of triangle C. And then you have to identify the rotation that maps back to triangle A by finding the center. So to find the center of rotation for two images, uh, for an object and image, you will need to draw a uh, intersection line between both and you will find out the coordinates. Okay, so you can see here, they have given you three marks for each uh, sub-questions, A, B, and C. So the first question is this, which is correct. Second question is this, which is correct. And they say, accept correct follow through from an incorrect answer to part A. And the last one will be accept follow through from correct intersection. Okay, so this is how you answer. So let's look into the end of series report, which is a comment from the examiners. Uh, familiar errors were to get horizontal and vertical lines the wrong way around or to carry out both reflection on 
triangle A. So what are the family areas? Let's look into the family areas. Some students will tend to make a mistake where when they say y equals to two, they tend to go to the y, uh, they tend to uh, go to the y axis and they draw two here, which is here. This is two, okay? So they'll, they'll draw a line at the, at the y axis. Or maybe they will draw a line at the y axis, but the x is two. So this is how a confusion happened. All you need to do when they say y equals to two, straight away go to y equals to two, and you need to draw a line here, intersecting the line. I mean, on the line y equals to two. So that's the reason they have actually explained that question is reflection in the line y equals to two. So you can see the line that I drew just now was in the line y equals to two. So that's the, uh, that's the most common mistake that student will do. They'll get confused. Instead of drawing uh, on the line of Y, they'll draw on the line of X. Okay, moving to the next one. Okay, uh, next is A, all right? Uh, as they say, the use of X axis and uh, or Y equals 2.5 was the common error. So that, that was the common error that have been used. And the use of the Y axis was a common error for the second reflection, okay? And a, num a small number, a small number gain one mark for a correct reflection on an incorrect B. Candidates did not seem concerned when triangle C was visibly not a rotation of triangle A and continued to guess as a suitable center of rotation, often choosing a vertex of triangle A. Others gave the correct answer even though it had no connection with the images they had drawn. So some students uh, just made a guess for the center of rotation and some students actually uh, uh, wrongly drew the reflection of C and B and they got somehow the correct answer. So this is how it, uh, the command came from the examiners. Let's look into the second question. So this is a question about um, scaling triangle. Okay, they, they have actually, uh, ask you to uh, draw a ring around the triangles below that are congruent to triangle A. So when we are talking about congruent, it has to be uh, the angle needs to be the same and the sides, are also, the sides will be the same. So that's what we call as congruent, okay? Uh, these are the two answers. One or two correct rings with no more than one incorrect triangle ring. Okay, so why does the second image was congruent is because when it is being rotated to, when it's being rotated or the orientation is changed, it is it is having the same uh, same uh, orientation and it is having the same length. Okay, and the second one is also the same when you made it in, when you change the orientation to the fourth one, the fourth image, the length are the same, the angle are place at the same place. So that's what called congruent. No matter how do you or how do you rotate the triangle, the angle still stays the same. All right. So that's what congruent says. And it is uh, two marks. So there is no uh, there is no extra answers or uh, maybe uh, get uh, maybe answers that can tell you uh, wrong answers. So this is the perfect answer. All right. There's no estimation and this is the answer. The series report is one mark was the most common score for this question. Most often indicate an incorrect triangle alongside. So some of them uh, must have just get one mark because maybe they wrongly uh, circle the wrong triangle, which is not congruent. So that is the most common mistake. All right, let's look into the third example. So this is a diagram with a shape of rotational symmetry of order two. And they ask you to find the perimeter of the shape. You have to give the answers in centimeter. If you look at the question, they are uh, they are also a centimeter length, and also there's a slight um, there's a slight meter length. There's one length here which is meter, okay, which is one point three. So you need to ensure that you uh, look into this. Uh, you look into this length because some students will happen to just add everything without looking the M. So you can't add length if the units are not the same. So the first step that you need to do is since the question asks you to give in centimeters, you just need to change meter to centimeter. So one meter is equals to 100 centimeter and 
meter. So when you want to change to meter to centimeter, you just need to multiply by 100. So you will have 130 centimeter here. Okay, so when they say it's a rotation symmetry of order 2, this is a shape where uh, you have this identical shape. That's the reason it's called rotation symmetry 2. So let's find the parameter without further ado. So let's start with 70 here. So what would this be? Okay, this would be a combination of 130 and also 50. Since they said it is a rotational symmetry of order 2. So they have the same length. So we have 50 centimeter here. And the total or will be 180 centimeter. Okay, uh, moving to forward. This also will be 100 centimeter. This will be 132. All right, and we have here as 20 centimeter similar as this and we have here as 70 centimeter so we have actually labeled all the blank uh, length where they did not uh, label so let's look into the adding okay let's start with 70 plus with okay 180 okay let's look into the third one 130 plus 20 plus 50 plus 70 again here plus 180 plus 130 and also plus 50, all right? So the final answer you're supposed to get will be 900, all right? So what are the, uh, what are the correct method for, uh, sorry, what are the marks that you can gain here is, okay, so the correct method will be you need to multiply two for each since they are identical or, and don't forget, you have to change the 130. So if they see you changing 130 due to centimeter, they'll give you one mark. They see you the correct method, they'll give you one mark. And the final answer should be 900. And you will get, you will get three marks. So if you have not provide the working, you won't be getting the three marks. You won't be getting one mark for the answer. Okay, so let's look into the end of series report. So generally, this question was answered quite well, although some learners offered only an answer with no working and resulting either, either three marks or no marks. So some students or some candidates, they tend to just give the answer without working where they lose two marks there. A common error at the two mark level was to miss one of the sites, usually 20 centimeter. So what are the sites here? What are the sites they, that they might miss out will be this part here. Okay, and some of them might have added, added 20 here, since parameter is actually to find the surface, to find the outer surface length. All right, and the third one will be most learners was, were credited with at least one mark, usually for a correct length mark on the diagram. Errors is they have used 1.3 uh, instead of meter, they have, they have changed into 1.3 centimeter. So it's supposed to be changed into 130 centimeter. So that's the most common area that students have done. Now let's look into paper two. So the example questions from paper two. The diagram shows a triangle on a grid. So on the grid, you need to draw six or more triangles to show how it's tessellate. First of all, to tessellate, how does tessellate works? You have to ensure that the shape does not create a gap. You shouldn't have a gap when you want to tessellate a polygon. So triangle is a example of a polygon that can tessellate. So this is the way that you are supposed to draw it. Um, six or more triangles on the grid sharing at least one edge with another triangle, creating a trans, uh, tessellation. So let's do this together. Start with uh, first half. Okay, so I can see here, this is the, I have to follow exactly from the first shape of triangle. Okay, and this is it. You have to ensure to not create any gap in between the polygon. And it has to be six more. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, and then we have four here. Okay, we have five here. And the last one, we have six. Okay, so you can see there is no gap in between. Okay, you have to ensure there is no gap to draw this tessellation to this triangle and it tessellates. So that's how tessellation work. One mark just for you to draw six more same triangle and it has to be the same uh, length or the same size as the original triangle. 
Okay, let's look into the end of series report. So many candidates were able to answer this correctly, but many draw unconnected triangles or fail to show a tessellation. So you have to ensure when you draw a tessellation, you cannot create a gap. That is, if you created a gap, it means you have drew an unconnected triangles. Okay, moving to the next one, question 18. Uh, coordinates, so you need to find the midpoint, all right? Uh, you need to find the coordinates of D. So they have given you the midpoint. So A has a coordinate of 2 and negative 2. B has a coordinate of 10 and 14. C is the midpoint of B. And D is the midpoint of CB. So let's look, let's find C, which is the midpoint of AB. Only then we can find the midpoint of uh, CB, which is D. Okay, so to find a midpoint, the formula, the general formula will be x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So um, what you need to do is you need to add the x coordinates. You have 2 plus 10 divided by 2 and negative 2 plus 14 divided by 2. So I'll have your 12 divided by 2, which is 6. I'll have your also 12 uh, divide by 2, which is 6. So this is considered the coordinate of C. Now, C will be the midpoint of AB and D will be the midpoint of CB. So we already have the co coordinates of C and now the coordinates of B will be 10 and 14. So let's find the coordinate of D, which is 6 plus 10 divided by 2, 6 plus 14 divided by 2. So I have 16 divided by 2, which is 8, and I have 20 divided by 2, which is 10. So let's look into the real answer. As they say, it's 8 and 10. So let's look at how, how can we gain marks as, as uh, the question has already given you the three marks. So the first mark will be if they've seen you a side of you finding the coordinate of C, all right? And they do not allow if you minus the coordinate which is x1 minus x2 it's supposed to be x1 plus x2 so if they didn't see if they've seen you uh doing the working to calculate uh the coordinate of c they'll give you one mark or they straight away will give you two marks if you they've seen you finding the coordinate c and uh you are already finding the coordinate d which is the working all right and then they've given you the last mark for your final answer okay so you will need to do the working in order for you to gain the three marks. So this is the answer scheme. Okay, let's look into the end of series report. It seems that many learners did not read the question carefully. Many stop after finding the first midpoint, which is the midpoint of C. Okay, and they only gain credit for this if they made it clear that this was C. Many did not and put it straight on the answer line. A number of learners were credited with two marks. Uh, there were a number of learners who misremembered the formula and subtracted the coordinate. So, well, first common mistake would be many candidates have stopped until C. So they thought you just need to calculate, you need, you need to find the coordinate of C only. Okay. And there are a number of candidates who has mistakenly remembered the form, misremembered the formula, which is instead of you adding x1 plus x2, they have went and uh, divide by two, they have actually changed to x1 minus x2 divided by two. So this is a wrong formula. All right. So let's look into the next subtopic, which is handling data. Okay, for handling data, under handling data, you will come across questions such as diagram, charts, graph, representations, analysis. You will need to explain, uh, interpret data. You need to present. You need to you need to calculate the mode, averages, median, and mean. All right, and also you call it as statistics. Okay, so let's look into the example of exam questions in paper one. Okay, uh, I'm repeating this again. In paper one, you can use calculator. So according to the question, there are 280 students in year 10. So half of the students are boys and 150, this is the first um, point, which is 280 students. This is also the second point. They are half of the students are boys. 155 of the students get uh, grade A, B, or C in their mathematics, and 61 goals grade B. So you need to complete the table by having the information, which is the four information that is given here. So let's start. 280 students in year 10, they have written here, which is good. Half of the students are boys. So half of the students will be 280 divided by 2, which is 140. So total boys will be 140. 
40. Uh, 155 students get grade A, B, C in their mathematics. Uh, okay, so 155 students get uh, grade A, B, C will be the total here. Okay, 61 girls get grade A, uh, grade D, E, F. Uh, so you need to write here, 61. Okay, now having the information, I think it's a, you are able to find out the answer. So let's find the uh, total of grade D, E, F. Since we have the total of students who got for everything, you just need to minus 280 with um, 155. So you will have 125 here. Having this, you can minus 125 with 61. You will have the answer as 64. Okay, having 64, you can take 140 and you minus with 64, which will produce 76. Okay, having the grade ABC, you can also now change uh, minus 155 with 76, which will produce 79. And now to find the total for girls will be 79 minus 61, which you are supposed to get the half of 280. And it's supposed to be 40, 140. Okay, so we are there already. Okay, so a student who chooses at random from year 10, write down the probability that a student is a girl with a grade DEF. So a girl with a grade DEF, which will be here, 61 a girl with a grade DEF. So 61 out of the total number of students, which is 280. Okay, so if you are able to, uh, if you are able to simplify it, you can simplify, but it's only a one mark question. So you will not need to simplify as it already simplified, 61. Okay, uh, you will get two marks at, uh, you will get one mark at least for four correct entries. Okay, if you don't get the full mark, it's fine. Uh, full answers correct, it's fine. At least four correct, you're able to get one mark. And if it's a, all correct answers, you're able to get two marks. Okay, mm, the end of series report. So generally a well-answered question. Okay, most candidates got two marks. An arithmetical slip sometimes reduced the mark to one. However, a completely blank table was seen rarely. So some students fail to answer the questions. They leave it blank. And for question A, this part was answered well by majority of the candidates because it's just a basic uh, calculation with the given information. And 61 over 125 was a common error as 61 over 140 and rounding the answer to 21%. So the common error is because of uh, students tend to make a total of girls instead of total of all the students, which is year 10 students. Okay, so number a question, next question will be, the student in class 9L have a test. So the table shows information about their marks. So this is called, uh, this is called frequency table, okay? And there are uh, 28 students in the class. So the model class interval will be 20 to 29. So model class also can be known as mode. And the lowest marks is seven marks. All right. So let's find the remaining 11 and four. Uh, the lowest mark is seven marks. So you can actually um, uh, place uh, the information they ask you to complete the frequency column. So according to the answer, you can see here from the first mark, okay, two numbers that add up to 13 or any integer value less than 11, okay, uh, which is 0, 9 and also integer value of at least 12 in the 2029 20, row. So you can choose 1 or 12 or you can choose 11 or 14 because um, 11 plus 4 is equals to 15 and the total is 28 minus 15, which is equals to 13. So any number, when, when you made up both, you will have 13, which is 1 and 12. All right? Uh, two numbers that add up to 13. Or an integer less than 11 in 0 to 9 row, and also an integer uh, value of less than 12. Okay, so when they, uh, any number that can then made up to 13, okay, of course, uh, you can choose 1 and 12, but you can't please... 12 in 0, 0 to 9 because the question C model class interval is 20 to 29. So you have to ensure that the 12, which is the mode of the frequency table, should be placed at 20 to 29 because mode is the number that is uh, highest repeated frequency. 
in a table. So of course, 12 needs to be placed here and one needs to be placed here. Okay, there's two marks for each number for answer. Okay, and this question was well answered. The majority of learners gain at least one mark for giving two numbers that added to 13, other than 12 and one. So some of them might have given six and seven and all. Okay, so Rajiv is investigating the next question. Okay, Rajiv is investigating the use of leisure center. So they will ask you to tick to show if there's a primary or secondary source of information. First of all, let me just uh, briefly explain to you what is primary source and secondary source okay so primary source or data okay primary source or data is where you find the data by yourself for example you want to investigate about how many covid patients are admitted in a certain hospital in a day what you have done is you have actually got you have actually went to the hospital okay you have uh, you are rec you recorded each and every patient who is admitted in a day so that's called primary because you are doing the survey you are investigating and you are getting the data by your own for secondary data you might get the data which is the same situation i've given you you want to find out how many covid patients were admitted in a certain hospital you can get the data from a book internet a newspaper or even from uh, from uh, other sources that is already stated there. So you just need to take up the information that already someone else have done the survey. So that's called secondary data. So let's look into the first one. Rajiv gives a questionnaire to people who use the leisure center. So uh, when he gives a questionnaire, he is actually so he's he's actually giving to the people and they will answer the question from the questionnaire. So he needs to tabulate his own data by looking at the answers from the questionnaire. So that is called primary. Rajiv needs a local newspaper article. So you will get data from someone who's already created the data and they they, they re represent the data in a newspaper. So Rajiv reads the data from a person who has already. Uh, present the data. So we call it as secondary. Rajiv looks at the leisure center website. So website is also called internet where people has already placed the data there. So we call it as secondary. Okay. So here's one question from Rajiv's questionnaire. Okay. So this is the question. How many times did you use the leisure center last month? Once, two or three times, four or five times, more than six times. Tick one box. So describe one error in this question. So I would say, how many times did you use the Leisure Center last month? They have no options for people who have never used the Leisure Center last month. Okay. So you can also see there's a lot of answer in answer scheme. All right. And first the answer was correct. We have done just now primary, secondary, and secondary. I also explained all three must correct. What if you only have two corrects and one wrong? You still don't get mark. You have to get all three as the same as the correct answers. Only then you deserve one mark. Next question, a correct explanation will be there is no box for zero for people who've never used the leisure center before. Okay, um, there is no box for six. It should be more than five times also. And do not allow if they say they uh, do not allow for answers that say they may not remember how many times and they are limited option. Two or three should not be grouped. So the best answer that you can go to is zero because of course they ask people who've never used the leisure center before. But there is no options for people who have never used it before. All right. Let's look into the next one. So this is the end of series report. Okay, learners found both parts of this question quite difficult. Many gave the exact opposite answer or made just one error. Primary, secondary or primary was a common error. And of course, they only deserve zero mark because they have to get all three correct. For question B, learners did not seem to understand this part of the question. So they have often said Rajiv did not go to Leisure Center or that he should use two or three, not two or three. Others focus on what the center was used for rather than how often. So they have actually uh, misinterpreted the question on how it should be. Okay, so let's look into exam question paper two. Okay, uh, just to remind you again, exam, uh, paper two, we can use a calculator. So 
Angelique leaves home at 8.30. She walks at a constant speed to show which three kilometers from her home. So this is basically a distance time graph. Okay. She arrives at the shop at, 19, at 10 a.m. and stays there for 15 minutes. She then walks at a constant speed back home, arriving there at 10, 10 a.m. So they ask you to draw the travel graph to show Angelique's journey, which is very easy. So let's start with drawing it. First, information. Angelique leaves home at 8.30, so you have to start from here, okay? And she walks at a constant speed to a shop which is 3 kilometers from her home. So a constant speed, 3 kilometers at home. She arrives at the shop at 9.10 a.m., which is here. So this is 9.10 a.m. And then stays there for 15 minutes. So 9.10 uh, stays for 15 minutes, okay? You can be um, 9... Okay, so you just go here for a while, uh, right? And then she then walks at a constant speed back home, arriving there at 10, 10 a.m. Okay, so this will be the right answer, 10, 10. A constant speed again. So let's look into the final answer scheme. Okay, according to the answer scheme, it was just same as mine, 8.30, okay, 8.30 a.m., and then you can see it's halfway at the 9.30. It's not even reaching or touching 9.30. And because it's 9, uh, it's nine. It's supposed to be 9.25. And then all the way to 10.10 10 with a constant speed. Okay, so you have to ensure that uh, trapezium-shaped travel graph that shows a journey leaving home at 8.30 and arriving home at a time between 10.05 and 10.15. Okay, so it's supposed to be a complete correct horizontal section. So this is the end of series report, a comment from the examiners. So many were able to draw the required trapezium shape for one meter, and most were able to complete the journey for two marks. A common error was they misinterpret the scale or the third part of the journey to continue upwards rather than returning home. So instead of, go, instead of drawing back to 10, 10, which is uh, going returning home, they've actually drawn uh, the same horizontal split. Okay. Let's look into the next example. 50 children takes a mathematics test. Three weeks later, they take a second mathematics test. So the graph shows their scores out of 10, both tests. Okay, write a statement to compare the scores of the children in two sets. So let's look into the graph ra very randomly. So you can see the darker line is actually representing scores in the first test. And the uh, dotted line is representing score in the second test. Okay, as you can see, the first score in the first test, it started from zero and it goes up all the way to 18 number of children and it went down until the, uh, the score of eight, which is zero back. Okay, so this is a result of three weeks later. They, uh, this is a result of 50 children, okay? And let's look into the answer scheme. You can actually compare, you can actually give a statement to compare that. Um, when you compare the score in first test, there were 18 number of children. But when you compare at, at the third, uh, at the, the score of three. But if you look at the uh, number of score in second test for 16 children, there are six, uh, six, so they score 6 out of 10 for 16 number of children, 3 out of 10 for 18. So you can conclude that the children got higher scores on the second test. Um, they would allow you to make a statement if you are making the second test was easier. Uh, you are also making it comparing because of the word easier. Uh, maybe you can also put the children improved also is a comparing statement. They would not accept if uh, you are talking a statement about one test only, such as the mode for the second test was six, but you are not talking about the first test. The whole, the whole main uh, purpose of the question is to compare. So you're talking about one test only. So it shouldn't be the, they will not give you mark, they will not accept. End of series report, the comment from the examiners, the most common misconception about the graph were related to the peaks. Some thought the second test was harder because it was not as tall. So some thought there were fewer students in the second test because it was, it was also not as tall. And some candidates just compared the frequency of a particular score in a test. So like the second test was easier was a very, very common answer, which they would also allow the statement. 
Okay, next example. Angelique has a fair six-sided dice. Find the probability of throwing a multiple of three. So in a dice, you have numbered one to number six as it says six-sided dice. And they're asking a probability of throwing a multiple of three. So multiple of three in a dice is consists of three and six. So there are two numbers. There are two values. And the two, uh, to find the probability is number of a favorable outcome over num uh, total number of possible outcome. So when you have only two numbers, which is three and six, there are two divided by the total number, which is six. You can also choose to simplify or not because it's just a one mark question. Next question will be Angelique throws a different side, six sided dice 120 times. So these are the score for starting from number one to number six. The frequency is recorded and work out the experimental probability of throwing a multiple of three. A multiple of three is starting from three and six, which is only two. You can add this to frequency 21 and 24, and you have to divide it by 120. So 21 over uh, 21 plus 24 is equals to. 45 and you have to divide uh, make it into a fraction of 120 also this is only one mark all right or you can have any equivalent fraction okay that will be the answer and next for the end of series report uh probability questions seem to cause a uh, some learners problem okay uh if part a was wrong part b will, you will also be wrong so A, most answer scenes were correct. The most common error was 1 over 6 or 3 over 6. Um, they've accidentally uh, only calculate 3 out of 6, which is only multiple of 3. They thought 3 over 6. But it's supposed to be multiples of 3, which is 3 and 6. And the second, the common error will be 21 over 120, which is they only choose 21. And 60 out of 20 or X over 45. Okay. So this is the last subtopic uh, from the presentation that I'm going to do today, which is problem solving. So let's look into example of problem solving question. Problem solving question is usually question that are created from word problems. Okay, so these are called critical thinking questions. You will need to identify the information from the word problems instead of all the other questions which has given uh, directly the numbers. So this is word pro example of a word problem. Let's look into back A, where you have a uh, ball, which is numbered number one, twice, two, three, and four. For back B, you have um, counters, sorry, for the uh, uh, earlier, uh, counters will be two, three, four, and six. So she takes one counter at random from back A and another counter at random from back B. She adds the numbers on her two counters, find the probability that Blessie's answer is more than six. This may take some time, all right, so uh, the answer scheme has already given the answer that how you should think about it. Okay, so first of all, you have a total of counters. Uh, you have actually five counters in back A and you have four counters in uh, back B. You will need to identify what would be the total uh, possible outcomes, which is 20. So how do you get the 20 is you have to... Uh, Draw a sample space diagram to make it easier. So, for example, the first bag is a name as is a, is already uh, numbered as one one two three four. The second bag is two three four six. So, just imagine when you take out the first bag, what if you take out as number one? And when you take out the second bag, what if you take out two? And you will need to add the both score. One plus two is equals to three. Moving forward, what if you take the first bag as number one and the second bag as number three? So one plus three. So this is called theoretical probability where you need to, you need to think all the possible outcomes. So when you have repeated the pro when you have repeated the process as, as the probability, you will have 20 outcomes. And the question is asking you find the probability that Blessie's answer is more than six. So let's calculate the number that is more than six which is starting from seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, this is the total of favorable outcome, eight divided by total of possible outcomes, number of possible outcomes. So number of possible outcomes, there are 20, and 20 possible outcomes there. You can also provide the answers eight over 20, or you can also simplify it. Okay. Um, 
Move to the next one. So end of series report, the repeated one in back A confuse some learners. So they will sometimes they do not calculate the repeated one counter. Uh, better response usually involves a sample space diagram or list of outcomes. So it's the best if you show the sample space diagram so that the examiner can easily give you mark if you have got the wrong answer at the end. One mark was credited for the 16 correct outcomes and other learners attempted to calculate the probability directly, which you only get one mark. Okay, um, a farmer, next question. A farmer needs 10 grams of seed to plant one square meter of wheat. The farmer wants to plant a field of 15 hectares, work out how many kilograms. So, as you can see here, the farmer has given 10 grams. So you need to ensure that you change the grams into kilogram because the question wants in kilogram. And he has planned uh, for one square meter of feet, one square meter of wheat. The farmer wants to plant a field of 15 hectares. So you need to change uh, 15 hectares into uh, meter square in order for you to uh, calculate. So 10 grams, you can change to kg, which is uh, divided by 1000. So you will get the answer as 0 0.01 kg equals to uh, one square meter. So the question once in 15 hectares, all right, 15 hectares, and they ask you to work out. So you can also create it as a ratio or you will need to divide in order to get the answer. Okay, so you need to enter that uh, you have shown uh, 15,000 meters square which is the conversion from hectare to meter square. Okay, you have to show the uh, conversion. They have you'll be, you'll be giving you one mark. And then of course, you will be multiplying with uh, 0 0.01 kg, 0 0.01 kg, and you will have the answer as 1,500. Okay, so that will be your answer for uh, the question. Okay, you need to show the working of the conversion, then you have one mark and the final answer one mark. End of series report, the question was not well answered. There were very few completely correct response. Many did not know that actually one hectare is equal to 10,000 meter. And lots of learners were credited one mark for a correct method applied in correct area. Many showed a little or no working. So you have to ensure that you have known the formula very well. Uh, one hectare is equal to 10,000 square meter. And you have to convert the question, the, the answers very well. The next example will be, Chen has 1.6 kilograms of flour. He uses one quarter of the flour to make a cake. He uses a further 325 grams of the flour to make biscuits. Calculate how much flour Chen has left and give your answers in gram. In this question, they have highlighted the grams. So, you have to ensure you have changed the kilometer into gram. So let's look in the, let's convert the kilogram into gram, uh, grams. 1.6 kilogram, change it to gram. You will have the answer equals to 1,600 1, gram. So he have uses one quarter of it, 1,600 times one quarter is one over four. Okay, so you will have 400 gram, which has been used. Okay, he uses a further of 325 gram. So after you have used a 400, you will be left with 1,200 gram. He uses a further of 325 grams of the flour to make biscuits. So that's where you have to minus 1,200 with 325. You have an answer of 175 grams. So this is how much flour Chan has left. And it is a two marks question. So you will get one mark if they have seen you changing kilogram to gram or they have seen you calculating uh, one quarter of the flour, which is 400 gram. And they'll give you the final mark for the final answer. Okay, so end of series report will be most gain one mark for a correct conversion from kilogram to gram, but arithmetic or conceptual errors such as subtracting one over four or incorrect conversion prevented many from gaining the two marks. So some of them might have used instead of my instead of my uh, subtracting thousand six hundred with four hundred, they might have used the four hundred and substitute with three hundred 
25 grams. So that are the common mistake that students will be doing. All right, so that will be the end of my slides for today. So thank you for everyone who has uh, watched the video. Um, I hope today's uh, information will be helpful for your future checkpoint exam. And don't forget to put up your best effort and good luck. Thank you.